Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bade Fatunde. Um, uh, I am a second year, uh, second year general cardiology fellow at, uh, at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. We're here at ACC 22, excited to be back uh, in person. We, I, am, I am excited to be joined by Dr. Christopher Granger, a professor of, uh, of cardiology at, at Duke. Um, and we are here. We are here to discuss uh, his um, new late-breaking abstract. Dr. Granger, you want to tell us more? Great, thanks, Bada. It's great, great to be here with you. And yeah, this is a, an abstract. First of all, let me give credit to Sean Picorni and, and John Pacini, who were actually were leading it, and I was a member of the team. But uh, but it's an it's it's a study that's I think really important. It's a study looking at the issue of cardiac implanted device infection and its management, and it. Um, it's pretty actually enlightening. So it looked at Medicare population, so these are people over the age of 65 who had implanted devices, there were about a million of those in this data set, and, um, and then um, who, who had infection, who had device infection defined as, um, uh, defined as being treated with antibiotics and being coded as having endocarditis or a device infection. And then, as, as you know, the um, scientific statements, the guidelines, uh, recommend that for definite device infection, the treatment includes extraction of the device. And it includes extraction, the recommendations are to do that in a timely way. And so um, the, the kind of shocking aspect of this study is only 20% of this population who had reasonably definite device infection had extraction. And then equally important, there was an association with substantially better survival for those who had a extraction, especially if it was within six days. And um, so, so this, this is yet another example, and I know you've been involved in heart failure studies, it's another example where, where we know what's the right thing to do. To, it includes extraction when you have a definite infected device but it hasn't been implemented. We're not doing it. And, and so then this begs the question, how do we develop systems of care where we more consistently assure that the patient gets the best therapy, in this case, reasonably prompt um, explant extraction of the device in the leads? You, you bring up several great points. I think um, one of them, I, I guess the first question that comes to mind is, are there any, I, were, was there any sign from the data or do you have any suspicion as to why there was such a, lo, such a low rate of device extractions? So it's hard to tell from the data, um, but, but we do know, for example, that in blacks and in women, they were less likely to get extraction more evidence of disparities of care. It's hard to get into the details from this particular data set, but what, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges, and it was, it's also true in so many other examples of implementation, is that especially in the United States, our health system is fragmented. And that fragmentation makes it really hard to make sure that when a patient presents with a condition like a device infection, that they get um, uh, that that they get a kind of a prompt referral and systematic approach to getting the best care, and I think that's a big part of it. Okay. So, um, perhaps some of the um, issue may be um, like the infection being identified in maybe referral centers, and then they say, okay, you need to follow up with. Um, with a physician, with an EP or, or a surgeon, and um, and then that just kind of falls through the cracks. Uh, basically, siloed uh, systems of care. I, I think that's you're exactly right. I think that's a big part of it. Turns out, even when a patient presents to a place like Mayo, Arizona, or Duke, um, I think there's even in that original hospital, even in that hospitalization at the tertiary care center, there's opportunity to do this in a more streamlined and systematic way. But certainly with referrals from other hospitals, that's even a bigger challenge. So, based off of this study, uh, first question is what would you want? fellows of training or anyone reading this study to know, and then what do you think are the next steps to in order to move the science forward? So, so two things for fellows in training. First of all, 
it's so amazing to have you guys organize like this. It's really uh, terrific um, uh, because you're the future. And, and I have to say that in, in um, so many examples of where we know what's the right thing to do to improve patients' health, we're not doing it in a systematic, consistent way. And, and we're counting on you to figure this out for us. But what we know is that, um, you know, two things in this regard. One is, for this particular condition, when you suspect a device infection, when you have a positive blood culture for someone who's had a device or, um, uh, or a pocket, you know, evidence of a pocket infection, make sure that patient gets referred to somebody who can do extraction in a, in a timely way. Um, get infectious disease consulted and, and um, you know, make sure that you're aware that, that if it's a definite device infection, um, that means basically positive blood culture without another obvious source of that positive blood culture that can be treated effectively, then that patient needs to get um, extraction. So that's number one. But number two and more important is how do we set up systems of care in our institutions to make sure that, that, we, that we measure what we're doing do we have care pathways in place to, 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 uh, to define what's the best care? And then we identify barriers and address those barriers in a systematic way to improve the way our patients are getting the evidence-based therapies. Yeah, I think those are all great points. Um, I, I think in cardiology, maybe the most effective, um, maybe the most effective application of uh, of guidelines to implementation has probably been door to balloon time, and so um, so it might be interesting. Maybe infection to extraction time might be uh, might be something interesting to see if uh, if that might uh, make a difference on the larger scale. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think you're exactly right. And as you may know, we've done a lot of work, including with people at Mayo Clinic, on um, on systems of care for STEMI, and I think there are some parallels. You know, same thing, it's networks, it's getting out in the community, it's um, putting together and, and measuring, as you, as you point out. Well, uh, thank you so, uh, so much for your, for your time, uh, Dr. Granger. I know I've learned a lot, and I hope everyone watching has, has been able to learn a lot. And uh, looking forward to, to uh, seeing the detailed study and learning more.